A spindle roughing gouge is perhaps the most used lathe tool in my shop because, among other things, it excels at turning rough blanks into cylinders for making furniture parts. It's not a difficult tool to use, and if you learn to master just two basic cuts with the spindle roughing gouge, you'll have a big head start when it comes to learning to use other turning tools. In this video, I'll show you those two types of cuts and the fundamentals you'll need to practice to master them. But before we begin, I should explain what a spindle roughing gouge is and what it isn't. This is a tool for spindle work, where the grain runs down the length of the blank, not for bowl or other work where the grain runs across the blank, presenting end grain on the sides. Bowl gouges are designed to deal with that end grain safely and effectively. Spindle roughing gouges are not. Notice how the bowl gouge has the corners ground off while the spindle roughing gouge features sharp corners. If one of these sharp corners digs into end grain, you're in for a violent catch. You may even damage the tool or yourself. So remember, this is a spindle roughing gouge, not a bowl roughing gouge. This particular gouge is from Carter & Son Toolworks. They are, in my opinion, the best out there. If you have questions about the gouge I use, I will link to it below, including a cool tool segment that we did on Carter & Son Tools some time back. Perhaps the most important part of turning is moving your body properly. We can make a whole video about that, and maybe sometime we will. But to get good results with a roughing gouge, you must move your body from one end of the blank to the other, not your arms. You can't maintain an even cut by just moving your arms. The tool should be held against your side, and the position of your arms should remain locked. You will then shift your weight from one foot to the other, moving your body as you cut across the blank. As I said, we'll discuss two different types of cuts that may be made with the spindle roughing gouge and which form the basis for a lot of turning techniques and other tools as well. These cuts go by many names, but I call them the roughing cut and the smoothing cut. So let's begin with the roughing cut. The tool is held perpendicular to the blank. The tool rest is about half an inch away and raised so I'm cutting a little above center. I lay the tool on the rest, then I place the heel of the bevel on the workpiece first. In this position, it will not cut, but it will also not catch. This allows me to gradually lift the handle until the cutting begins. At this early roughing stage, I'll only get a bunch of chips rather than a smooth shaving. But when I'm satisfied with the depth of the cut, I begin moving my body to carry the cut across the length of the blank. I may continue with additional right to left passes, or left to right, or even back and forth. The goal is to knock the edges off the blank and make it round. As I do so, the blank gets narrower and I must adjust my tool rest closer. This is a good chance to see my progress while the lathe is stopped. But I can also check my progress by laying the shaft of the tool on top of the blank while it spins. If the tool bounces around, I still have flat spots to remove. When it's fully round, the tool will lay well on the blank. While a roughing cut is often used to prepare a blank for finer cuts, it may also be used to quickly shape a workpiece. In this case, I want a dowel with two parallel edges. For a new turner, this may be easier said than done. You may have difficulty cutting to a consistent depth from one end of the blank to the other. The depth of your cut may be affected by several factors, but they all come down to angle and pressure. If you raise the angle of the tool's handle, you'll cut deeper in the wood. If you lower it, your cut will become shallower. The tool may even stop cutting and just bounce around on the surface of the blank if you lower the angle too much so you're back to having only the heel in contact and not the cutting edge. Pressure against the blank also affects the cut. If you push harder against the wood, you'll remove more of it. Some people use their finger against the tool rest as a depth stop to help them regulate how much they push the tool toward the blank. The key to nice parallel sides on your blank may seem obvious then. Keep the tool at a consistent angle and apply consistent pressure. But that's where body movement becomes critical. People tend to hold their tool at their side well. The arms are locked and they aren't raising or lowering the handle mid-cut. But as they lean from one foot to the other, they often raise and lower their body. This will change the tool angle. You must keep your knees a little bit bent and compensate for the change in height that naturally occurs as you rock from side to side. 
Another common mistake is not moving your body completely parallel to the bed of the lathe. Leaning forward or back will change the pressure of the cut. This is usually caused by poor foot positioning or a lack of balance. Consistent body movement is the key to all types of wood turning. If you don't learn this during this roughing cut, you'll struggle with every other cut and every other tool. So take the time to find a position that you're comfortable in, practice your body movement with the lathe off, and then put the tool on the rest, place the heel on the blank, raise the handle to begin the cut, and move your body, not your arms. A roughing cut utilizes a very small section of the gouge's cutting edge. So it's not a bad idea to rotate the tool from time to time to spread the wear out over more of the edge and reduce your trips to the grinder. With practice, you can produce a relatively smooth surface with a rough and cut, but you're still likely to see ripples. That's where the smoothing cut comes in. A smoothing cut is very much like a rough and cut, except you skew the tool to 45 degrees to the side. This changes the way the edge interacts with the wood for a couple reasons. First, while a rough and cut gouges a channel into the wood, a smoothing cut shears the fibers, creating a spiral-shaped shaving through a slicing action. And because of the way you hold the tool, you'll be cutting more with the wings on the sides than with the valley at the center. Your tool is therefore acting more like a skew or a plane than a gouge, and with practice you can produce a smoother surface. But there's another factor to consider, supporting your cut. This is a principle that applies to all sorts of wood turning tools and techniques, but when the roughing gouge is concerned, supported cuts are more of a factor during smoothing cuts than roughing cuts. A supported cut occurs when the point on the edge that is doing the cutting is in line with the part of the shaft that is touching the tool rest. The underside of this gouge is round. As you roll it, the point that touches the tool rest changes. The cutting must occur in line with that point. This occurs naturally when the gouge is held perpendicular to the blank as during a roughing cut. But when you skew the tool to make a smoothing cut, you can easily be cutting with a part of the edge that is not in line with the point that's resting on the tool rest. When this happens, the tool tries to roll and correct that alignment. It wants to be well supported. If you're only taking a very light pass, as you normally would when you're making a smoothing cut, the tool isn't likely to roll out of your grip but an unsupported cut will become harder to control and therefore inconsistent in depth so your surface won't be smooth. Holding the tool while keeping the cut supported is a skill that you'll acquire over time, but as a beginner, if you're getting frustrated because you can't make consistent cuts and leave behind smooth surfaces with a spindle roughing gouge, the cause is likely either your body movement or a failure to support the cut. So be patient and work on these techniques. If you can master these two cuts, you will have a massive head start on using many other turning tools to do many other things. See you next time. When I decided to get more serious about wood turning, I spent a lot of time researching turning tools. I kept coming back to Carter & Son. These are M42 high-speed steel. These stay sharp about five times as long as my regular high-speed steel gouges. Carter & Son is a small family-owned business with exceptional quality and service. Check them out for yourself at the link below the video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.